It's Monday. It's January 3rd. And the word of the day is onism, which means the frustration of being stuck in just one body that inhabits only one place at a time. Used in a sentence, a great way to deal with onism is onanism. There you go. <laughs> Nobody in my body has ever thought that the world needs another one of these. I am the Ford <laughs> Pinto of human experience. <laughs> See, like for me, I feel like it's b- about which place I inhabit at a time. I was more that. Sure. You gotta do the stranger. <laughs> I'm no illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from America's far center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, Donald Trump makes Candace Owens look stupid. We'll get the best Jordanian fistfight since Creed. (laughs) And we'll learn that Skynet is playing the long game with mostly low-level pranks right now. I wouldn't have predicted that. (laughs) But first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, No Illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, welcome to 2022. Ooh. Got any resolutions? I don't know. I get paid for a free podcast we give away. I resolve to keep getting that lucky. Uh, so, me too. <laughs> well, so after 2020 and 2021, I, I feel like it should be the year making resolutions, right? Like, I, like, <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it seems weird to ask anything more of me at this point. Yeah. You, years you want to maybe i don't know uh diet on something death yeah. whatever <laughs> fuck you all right so uh, i resolve to say fuck you 2020 and 2021 every so often there you go there, there's my first one okay in our lead story tonight donald trump is apparently the voice of reason within the republican party right now <laughs> because we're very clearly living in a simulation and everything is insane And the programmers of that simulation decided to close out 2021 by running a terrifying dark humor test to fuck with us, I guess. Some computer nerd from the future, which is actually the present, took a few spins on the wheel of go fuck yourself, and we all got to finish the year with another giant surge in the global pandemic, with me having a conversation about the word semi-hemi-demi-quaver, only to have it pop up on Jeopardy the very next day, Weird. and... With Donald Trump trying to explain science to anti-vaxxer talking head Candace Owens during an interview. And now there's a giant idiot fight within the GOP. And again, Donald Trump is the voice of reason in that fight. And then the computer nerd was like, you know what? Uh, One more spin. I'm thinking one more spin, right? Cool, cool, cool. Beep, bop, boop. And we're going to kill Betty White. Go fuck yourself. There you go. That's how we ended. See, I... I feel like she did that on purpose to leave a point on the board for celebrity death pools, right? She was a very thoughtful lady by all accounts. Yeah, yeah. If also, you had Betty White in your fucking celebrity death pool, fuck you. You're a terrible person. <laughs> yeah. There's no points in that. That was the dumb pick yeah, anyway. Yeah, right. You're terrible and dumb. Yeah. Simulation theory isn't true for a variety of reasons, but I, I agree, Heath. It does kind of feel like we've been tricked into a pool and someone has removed the ladder at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's what happened in the interview. Candace Owens, the Republican Party's lots of black friend, wanted to pwn the libs and get a nice big pat on the back from one of her political idols in Donald Trump. So she decided to really tee it up for him and started asking questions about how the vaccine is stupid. She she thought he'd be all excited about that. Uh, Just for the record, Trump got a booster shot last month and he actually got booed when he mentioned that during an event for his fucking pestilence cult. They all went nuts about it. Also, just for the record... Candace Owens is definitely vaccinated and a big fat liar. Yes. Sure is. Yep. She recently attended a UFC event at Madison Square Garden in New York City, where you absolutely had to show proof of vaccination to get in. She's vaccinated, but telling people that would fuck up her pestilence brand, so she tries to pretend otherwise. She's fucking vaccinated. Yeah. Though. Honestly, unvaccinated is probably the most pleasant thing Candace Owens has had to pretend to be in years. So. <laughs> Well, the the funny Yikes. part of these things for me is that they all seem to think that he's smart enough to play along until they're actually there in the moment in the interview. Like he's too dumb to play dumb, and somehow they haven't figured that out yet. No, <laughs> he's bobbing while they're weaving. Yep. <laughs> so, Candace Owens brought up the vaccine topic and said, "More people have died from COVID this year under Joe Biden than last year." But more people took the vaccine this year. So, you know, people are questioning. And right there. That's, that's a real when, quote, by the way. That, that's that's a real quote. She said. That's seriously what she said. And that is when Donald 
Christ Trump <laughs> had to jump in and interrupt and be the logical, scientifically literate person in some, you know, fucked up relative sense that's part of a simulation prank. Now, in fairness to the reality of Donald Trump still being an idiot, he didn't explain that COVID didn't start killing people until it spread all over the country right. and the world, which took some time in the time dimension of 2020. That's a thing that had to happen. But he did explain that most of the deaths in the U.S. during 2021 were exactly in places where stupid people who listen to Candace Owens live. And also where I, Donald Trump, got most of my votes from. Trailer. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, Did maybe maybe Trump just has an addiction to, like, interview faux pas, right? Like, if we can get oh, him okay. to talk to nothing but Infowars in 2024, he'll be more liberal than Bernie, just by the nature <laughs> of the... <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. He could never pull off the mittens, though, but yeah. No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good picture. I love it so much. Ah, oh, Bernie Sanders. So, Trump said a thing that was correct. I'm just going to let that sit with you for a second. He said a thing that was correct, and that's when the record needle of the universe screeched to a halt, and we got to see Candace Owens get all sad and confused and frustrated that her evil propaganda setup completely backfired. It was actually kind of fun to watch. Mm -hmm. I mean, this whole thing is terrifying, but when you're part of an evil prank simulation, you got to find the happy moments wherever you can, no matter how small. So... I did enjoy that little sadness moment for Candace Owens. So she spends the next few seconds audibly sputtering like a deflating balloon and she's flying around the room. And then she finally sits back down and tries to backpedal, but it just made it worse. Owens tried to pivot her comments and she said, OK, but these vaccine mandates, that's the pro That's a violation of our constitutional rights. And Trump... <laughs> <laughs> to his credit, he, he did another good thing here. He was like, okay, going to stop you again. I, I know what you're doing. I basically invented this. No, vaccines are good. <laughs> stop trying to kill all the stupid people. That's our voting base. Right. You're fucking it up. <laughs> and then following the interview, Joe Biden actually congratulated Donald Trump on doing one single thing that wasn't homicidal, insane, and or bigoted in his stupid fucking life. And Trump responded to that. Thank you. That is what happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're both just standing there. Why are you smiling weird? Why are you smiling weird? Yeah. <laughs> Declare a race war, man. No, yeah. you're wrong. <laughs> What's happening? God, Donald Trump has lowered the bar so much that he now gets presidential accolades for pooping in the big boy potty. <laughs> right? Yes, you did. Yes, I did. Yeah. So that's when the idiot fight really started going full blast after this all happened. They're like Nazis at Home Depot arguing over the tile pattern for the bathrooms at the camps. It's crazy. <laughs> this included another insane moment in our simulated lives when conservative pundit Meghan McCain fell ass backwards into being correct, kind of like Trump, and basically told Candace Owens to stop being a biological terrorist. And Owens responded by saying, oh, yeah, well, you're fat. Because, and that's what? really what she said. Because really? Because GOP lives in a middle school bus and they're assholes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm honestly impressed she didn't respond with, let's go Megan McCain's FUPA. So, you know. God. So, given all this talk about science, you're probably wondering, what does Alex Jones Alex have to Jones say? Alex Jones has to yeah. say, yeah. Well, according to Alex Jones, he wants conservative America to move on from Trump. And he claimed that he was going to spill all the dirt that he has on the former president. Jones also added, quote, Trump's name will go down in history as pure evil. I mean, which which is right. But it's, <laughs> Jones thinks it's because Trump said vaccines are real. Yeah, that's right, folks. Alex Jones is going to tell us who's pure evil. And then Snooki is going to tell us who's stupid. OK, right. But. Eli, you laugh, but if it hadn't already happened in this story, the other half of that joke would have been, and Donald Trump is going to tell us about vaccine efficacy. Yeah, it really was. Yeah. I was stuck on the second half exactly. of that joke for a while. <laughs> it's impossible. There's no more satire. There's no more analogies. It's just what happened. It's is, is. Yep. So with all that being said, it's easy to lose track of Donald Trump being pure evil for his entire life, except those few moments with Candace Owens. Mm. At one point, Trump even said... The vaccine is one of the greatest achievements of mankind. Again, he was correct there for a, a whole sentence. But 
let's keep in mind that Trump thinks he invented the concept of vaccines in some sense. He actually used the phrase during that interview, I created three vaccines. Did you, though? He, (laughs) He said that. But still, in a conversation about ethics between Donald Trump and a woman of color, Donald Trump was the good guy yeah. uh, for a second. He really was. So moral of the story, enjoy the Matrix, eat a digital steak, do some kung fu, have fun with it. Sure. What else are you going to do? Heath, I appreciate it. You don't have to refer to Candace Owens as a woman of color. Uh, everyone involved, uh, including her, is pretty sure she's white now. So you know, oh, you don't have to. I think you're all yeah. good. I don't mm, No. Citation needed. Ask okay. <laughs> I, <we're> gonna, <laughs> hey, BetterHelp. We're going to segue to you now. We're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. <laughs> this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. I don't know. I've just been feeling kind of blue lately. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Hello! Dude, what? Eli, what are you doing? Why are you dressed like that? Tis I, the lamoir of mental illness. I hear you may be stuck with melancholy, Heathleton. Have you a fainting couch upon which to pine away your last days? For it is essential. Um, um, Eli. Yes, Noalu Ziongays. We talk about better help a lot on this show, and this month we're discussing some of the stigmas around mental health, and feeling down isn't supposed to be glamorous. It's neat. No, no, it can actually be super lonely and isolating and messy. It can look like letting the people in your life down, lashing out when you don't mean to, or just feeling lazy. But you can actually get some help from BetterHelp. We ought better hail. Okay, what, does that count? Because he didn't technically say it. Oh. I don't think that should count. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll send it to Andrew. BetterHelp better is help? customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. But Noah, I cannot afford it. I spent all my miane on absinthe and cloth-bound notebooks in which to diarrhea. Sorry. In, in which to what? Diary. Sorry, that's the yeah. accent was... Oh, okay. okay. Mm. Got it. Accent of some sort. Uh, so, BetterHelp, it's actually much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. Plus, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Skeptocrat listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Skeptocrat. Mm, very well, I shall try your better help. Now, which of you will help me put the doors back, for I have repliased them with a beaded curtain? I, well, I feel like you should just do that yourself. Mm, I also did the bathrooms. Okay. Where are you from? Yeah, right? What? <laughs> Literature. Got it. <laughs> oh, okay. And we're back. Next up in headlines in Old Lang, here's your sign news. They say you should aim to spend. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I knew my blue collar comedy core would joke. Yeah, again. yeah, yeah. Get, no, nailed it. Get yep. in there. They say you should aim to spend New Year's Day doing what you want to spend the whole next year doing. And I hope we can all take a page from the book of a few members of Jordanian Parliament who opened up the new year punching sexist bigots in the face. Which is, not, but like, I, I, I feel like it's probably hard to swing your fist in Jordanian parliament without hitting a sexist bigot, though, right? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. So Also, the story's not, it's not what Eli, it, he made it sound like maybe it was a positive punching sexist. I think yeah. it's a positive Just wait thing. for it. Any Just wait punching for it. is good. We'll find out. So here's the backstory. Uh, the Jordanian parliament, that's the country of Jordan, is currently debating whether or not to amend their constitution to include- Yeah, we knew it wasn't like Michael Jordan's body of parliament. You know, his... I, I was looking at it and I was like, does everyone know that Jordan's a country? So, you know, if you if you aren't as dumb as I am, congratulations. So they are currently <laughs> debating whether or not to amend their constitution to include gender inclusive pronouns. Now, I know what you're thinking. For trans people? <laughs> no, 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 no. No. This is in the hopes of making women full citizens, a right which they currently do not enjoy. Because while women in Jordan can get, like, health care and education, they cannot do things like pass their nationality on to their children. So Right, or get fun. their marriage to a non-Muslim recognized. But other than that, loopholes and homicide laws for husbands that kill their wives and the need for special guarded shelters specifically for women at risk of honor killings. Women's rights are crushing it in Jordan, though. <laughs> yeah, they're doing great. 
It's a bunch of guys in suits having a really inept fist fight about maybe giving women a right. This is <laughs> this is so us. This is so mankind. <laughs> this is so us, right? Yeah. And I want to be clear, the amendment being proposed that caused the fight was not about whether or not to give women citizenship rights. The amendment was about whether or not the Constitution should say shit like no killing people no matter what he or she did. And, yeah. <laughs> and that fight wow. about whether or not to include the or she caused conservatives in parliament to lose their mind, start screaming at the speaker, then each other, and then they punched each other in the face. Yes, you heard that correctly, podcast listener. The conservative members of the parliament got into a fight with each other because they were arguing over who was holding the speaking stick or something. Well, yeah, they, they were they were fighting over who got to denounce the law the loudest and longest. <laughs> so, yeah, to be clear, Jordan's conservative party lost a high stakes game of stop hitting yourself. <laughs> I hate, I hate, I hate you though. I hate, okay, we're fighting you. This is so us. We just, <laughs> this is so men. We do this. We exactly. fight. Yeah. So we're stupid. That is obviously hilarious. But my hope is, my humble hope, is that we as a nation learn a thing or two from this. So AOC, if you're listening, and we know you are, she's a huge fan. Next time some creepy white 67 year old guy named Steve Hammer from Go Fuck Yourself, Iowa, tries to win himself a speaker slot by calling you a bitch or tweeting about your boyfriend's feet, I'd like you to kick the shit out of him. <laughs> you, you could do it. You're half his age. You probably do famous people exercises with Cara Santa Maria, like hot Pilates, and there are no laws anymore. Marjorie Taylor Greene literally tried to overthrow the government and called her coworker a terrorist. Nothing matters. Uh, well, she got kicked off Twitter, so justice, uh, just a cosmic personal justice now. in the world right there. But yeah, uh, AOC, get out there, literally beat the shit out of your coworkers. Honestly, I would venture you could beat up most of Congress John Wick style if you did like stretches first. So Honestly. Get out there. Beat the shit out of Republicans <laughs> in your life because that's what's going to change in 2022, people. We are doing a hit. 2022, no, we're, we're doing a hit. We're not. We'll and get your hammers, whatever you want. <laughs> and in weather by accident or design news. I have the periodic reminder that those of us who live long enough will witness a mass die-off that'll make the zombie apocalypse look pleasant, and we'll do it with a certain knowledge that it all could have been prevented if we'd been less stupid. Okay, but Jonah Hill was funny, though, right? right he was great, like, yeah, super yeah. So funny. funny. And holy shit, was December of 2021 filled with pot reminders of exactly what that's going to look like, and I'm not just talking about comedy movies. Uh, first... We had Kentucky breaking a 130-year-old record and having its deadliest tornado outbreak ever uh, during a time of year when tornadoes don't actually happen, you know, because it's December. We, we also had devastating wildfires wipe out whole communities in Colorado. We had hundreds of cities setting records for the latest snowfall in recorded history. And, of course, as we record this, I'm sweating like a fucking pig because my fan is too loud for the microphone. <laughs> okay, uh, fun fact. Pigs barely sweat pretty much don't sweat they have a small amount of sweat glands but the glands don't respond to thermoregulatory cues so pigs don't use sweating to cool down even though they have the tiny bit of sweat they do the expression actually comes from the smelting process when hot iron gets poured onto sand to cool down it looks like a sow and piglets when it balls up so they called it pig iron when the pig iron starts to form dew that's how you know it's cool enough to handle Oh. Um, yeah, not fun fact. We're all characters in a way less funny version of Don't Look Up in real reality. I don't know. That movie was good, but there were parts of it that felt just really fake, like a male scientist people wanted to fuck. It just took me out yeah. of it. It took me out no, of it. <laughs> a female president? Okay. 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 Break. So, so, yeah, of all the terrifying weather news the U.S. got in December, I think maybe the most emblematic of the problem came out of Kodiak, Alaska last Sunday, where a tidal gauge measured the highest December temperature ever recorded in the state. A downright summary, 67 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 19.4 Celsius, that's last Sunday, that's end of December. And I, I'm not being hyperbolic with summary. This is Kodiak fucking Alaska. The average high temperature there in August does not reach 67. And it's not like this was some weird anomaly that just barely snuck up enough to touch the southernmost part of the state. The whole state was cracking 60 degrees over the weekend. 
This includes the town that I guess is named after Alaska's evil twin, Unalaska, where they measured the. Sp- <laughs> Wait, it's probably pronounced you in Alaska real? or something. Yeah, that's how it's spelled anyway. Um, <laughs> that's the best. But yeah, but they apparently measured the state's warmest Christmas day on record as well. Great. Yeah, just big lines of people handing out Dixie cups of water along the Iditarod. <laughs> <laughs> just splash themselves in the face. <laughs> This is ridiculous. Okay, but on the plus <laughs> side, if anyone wants to buy beachfront property on spec, act yeah. now, right? Yeah, yep. Kodiak is downright warm in December. Now, believe it or not, the high temperatures aren't the most immediate problem. Normally in Alaska's interior, the air is too cold to hold much moisture this time of year. Yes, it's normally too cold to snow in December there. But with this unseasonably high temperature also came record-breaking precipitation, so much so that buildings are collapsing under the weight of the snow up closer to Fairbanks. And because the temperature kept rising, the huge snowstorms were followed by torrential rain, which then froze, causing frozen roads that bring all the shit to a standstill and are devastating for grazing animals that need to eat the shit that's trapped under that ice. Ah, this really sucks, but it's a wet heat, right? This is fine. <laughs> this is fine. It's a wet heat. Okay, someone throw a dead cow and a snow-covered rec center at James Imhoff. I think he's going to get it. I think he'll get it. <laughs> And look, you, look, I get that unseasonably warm in Alaska isn't a sexy news story. And, and, and when you're doing a comedy show, you kind of want to avoid weather disasters in general. But one of the reasons climate change is so dangerous is because it's so gradual and the signs of it are so spread out in so many different places. And if we don't sit up and take notice when Alaska starts getting literal shorts weather for Christmas, we deserve what we get. And speaking of holy shit, we're all going to die. I think it's time for a word for our next sponsor this week, Policy Genius. This is so us. Holy shit, we're going to (laughs) die. Joining us tonight for our Policy Genius ad is the ever-present specter of death. Death, thank you so much for joining us. Glad to be here. So, Death, tell us, how was your 2021? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. Well, I mean, except for generally just kind of brought down by Policy Genius. What's... Policy Genius. Oh, uh, well, Policy Genius can help you find home and auto coverage similar to what you have now, but at a lower price, which <laughs> I'll tell you is a real bean in my chili. Oh, that's a weird turn of phrase. It's a real bean in your chili? Bean in my chili. Huh. Okay, I mean, some people like that. Some people say it's not technically. Okay, whatever. Yeah, that's the whole uh, thing. H- how does it work? Well, first you head to PolicyGenius.com. You enter a few questions about yourself and your property. Then Policy Genius will show you price estimates for policies that fit your search and help you understand your options. The Policy Genius team can take a look for ways to save you more money. And if they find a better rate than what you're paying now, they'll switch you over for free. Policy Genius has saved new customers an average of $350 a year on home insurance. The Policy Genius team works for you, not the insurance company, so you can trust them to offer unbiased help and advocate for you every step until you're covered. Wow, that sounds great. Where do I sign up? Well, you just head over to PolicyGenius.com to get your free home and auto insurance quotes and see how much you could save. All right, we're in. Nice. Well, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, Where's that Eli guy? I gotta see him about a thing. Oh, I have, I have no He's idea. He's first left at the top of the stairs. Wow, fast. Not cool, dude. Eli, somebody's here for you. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. Next up in headlines, Madison Cawthorn is getting a divorce. Ooh. Yeah, well, he'd really appreciate it if everyone could respect his privacy during this difficult time. So we're going to talk about it <laughs> for a while. <laughs> no. No, we're not doing that. Uh, Especially, we're going to talk about it, considering the entire backstory of his marriage is insane and full of very obvious (laughs) lying and or stupidity. I'll start by saying that none of this is confirmed by any official intelligence reports or anything like that. So (laughs) it's a weird premise to what I'm about to tell you, (laughs) but that is true. This is not confirmed by intelligence reports, but we do know based on Cawthorn's own account, that he got married to a fitness model with the help of a military guy that he met during a ridiculous trip to St. Petersburg, Russia, full of absurd details that make it sound exactly like he very clearly got honeypotted by Russian intelligence, and now he's trying to quietly divorce the spy without getting in trouble. (laughs) That's what it sounds like. You know what? I knew that marriage didn't have legs. (laughs) 
Oh, Jesus, Eli. Solid. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not surprised he got suckered, though. He's not the kind of guy that can think on his feet. Uh, wait, never, <laughs> never, mind. <laughs> never mind. Just roll with the jokes. So, <laughs> I'm Amazing! sorry. The story of how he met his wife actually came out in 2020 during an interview he did with Stephanie Hamill of The Daily Caller. That great publication. Uh, it was following his victory in the GOP primary for District 11 in North Carolina. He is a sitting U.S. congressman now, in case you're not familiar. Oh, it's a sitting everything. So, yeah, there it is. So <laughs> most, of, most of the interview was it was solid daily caller journalism about important political philosophy, like how many pull-ups he can do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But he can do 30, apparently, with the chair on, which, you know, go fuck it. 30 pull-ups? That do doesn't 30 even make pull -ups. sense. I can do it. Okay. Okay. At one point in that, absolutely not. No, circling back. You can't, you can't do a pull up. I can't do a pull up. Neither of us can do pull ups. 30. I bet Noah can do pull ups. I, I want to do a pull up contest with Eli. Fair. Yeah. But if I okay. do 30, I'm in charge. I of will show. suck your dick. <laughs> I was if you say this. Okay. <laughs> if I do 30, you have to turn the universe inside this is, out. <laughs> this is an interesting new Patreon goal. <laughs> All right. Yeah, if you I, can see it like from this episode on, Eli is just like da da da. I was gonna say if I were truly <laughs> committed to the bit, I would now eggs. get so fucking <laughs> ripped to do thirty pull ups before I just show up like all fucking Joe Rogan roided out, just like hey guys. <laughs> He like jumps up onto the bar, starts doing gymnastics on it. Do you want me to do the pull ups? Whenever you're ready, I'll do the pull ups. Ready to go. All right. I'm like, this is a win win. So yeah. Maybe maybe a blowjob. Okay, so <laughs> universe inside out, everyone wins. <laughs> so they finish up the important stuff about pull ups. At one point in the interview, though, he gets a question about how he met his wife, and his answer literally starts with, "So it all began at a casino in Russia." <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> and, and that's when you get to watch Stephanie Hamill from the Daily Caller do that like. Ha ha thing. <laughs> and she just stares at him in complete awkward silence for what felt like so goddamn long. And during that so goddamn long, you get to watch Madison Cawthorn panic in his face <laughs> hole. And you get to watch this and he tries to work out the lie he's gonna tell to cover whatever the actual story is. It's not what he says here. It's mm -mm. he's covering something. And he does not do well with his cover lie. According to Cawthorn. He went on vacation to Norway and Sweden. The way he says it, though, he's like, I went to, and he looks up and he stammers, and he's like, it's close to Russia. It's Norway and Sweden. I went there with my bros. <laughs> so he went on a bro trip to Scandinavia, and then on a whim, they decided to each get $100 from the ATM or, you know, the cash in local currency, $100 worth, and take a boat to St. Petersburg, Russia, and check out... The casino there that they really like. The casinos in Norway and Sweden are bad. No, yeah, they have they're not bad as... odds or well, something. Okay, well, just because nobody's ever gone to Russia for anything other than work, human trafficking, or espionage doesn't mean it can't happen. <laughs> Heath. It just means it hadn't happened yet. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he was trying to be the first. I, look, if we hadn't discussed so many spies in U.S. slash world history over on Citation Needed, I would dare to call the Russians sloppy, but. Given uh, what we yeah. know, this is just yeah. downright clever, right? <laughs> it's just like, yeah, that's spying. Yeah. It is. I'm it's I feel like it worked. I know, again, not <laughs> confirmed, but I feel like he got honeypotted. Okay. Continuing the story. Again, this is the account from Madison Cawthorn himself. So he's at the Russian casino and he says, I met up with a US Army captain there. I met him for the first time, just some random US Army captain. They they developed a really close relationship, you know, like you do with Random military guys at a Russian casino. Yep, <laughs> yep classic. This feels so, like the introduction to an action sequence, right? I like know, there's gonna be a car it's, chase in this. Fucking bananas, yes. So he stays in touch with this random army guy he met at a Russian of casino. Course, like you do. Yeah. Like you do. And eventually Cawthorn's in Miami for work and he gets a text from the army guy. Inviting him to a CrossFit, CrossFit competition. competition. Of course. CrossFit competition. Sure. Yep. Um, at that point, Cawthorn explained that the, the wheelchair, it, that was not a fake prop, and he probably wouldn't be the typical competitor at that kind of thing, but he agreed to do the pull-up event. He's really good at pull-ups. And then when he got to the address that he was given for this CrossFit competition, it turns out it was a fake event. 
And the army guy really just wanted to set up Madison Cawthorn with the fitness model and CrossFit competitor named Christina, who eventually became his wife and is about to become his ex-wife. Also, she's a certified anesthesiology assistant. I should add that. Okay. Is she? Which is very interesting. I'm pretty sure they just said that to explain why she was sneaking around and choking people out and changing into their clothes without anyone noticing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's... Uh... Yeah, no, that, that definitely came after like a... It, wow, you sure keep a lot of chloroform in your purse, huh? Kind of a moment <laughs> or something. I, I'm certified with the, the chloroform. Child. So, again, the fact that Madison Cawthorn clearly got honeypotted, yep. it, it has not been proven, but it quacks a lot like mm-hmm. a honeypot. It's so, it's so, it must be. But, okay, I, I got to keep saying it because it's not, <laughs> it's not confirmed. But former FBI agent Peter Strzok agrees that it quacks a lot like a honeypot. He was the uh, the chief of the counter-espionage section of the Bureau, and he led the investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election. Great job. Yeah. Uh, it uh, worked out <laughs> great. Yeah. Well, he's the guy who eventually got removed from the Mueller investigation when it came out that Strzok said something mean about Donald Trump in a text a couple of times. Yeah. The Wall Street Journal did a full review of that. They they checked 7,000 or so messages, and they found that there was definitely not any conspiracy against Donald Trump happening. It was just Peter Strzok saying a mean thing a couple times. Also, by the way, Strzok is the same guy who led the investigation into Hillary Clinton's email server. Point being, probably not a mole for Antifa in the FBI. No. That's just my guess. According to Strzok, Cawthorn seemed to be telling a super sweaty, nervous lie during this interview, and I agree 100%. Strzok also added, quote, it's clear there's something unusual about how he found himself in St. Petersburg. <laughs> yeah. That's so fucking weird. Continuing the quote. Is he some nefarious Russian penetration? Almost certainly not. Is there something more? Almost certainly yes. What a nice way of saying he's not a spy, he's an idiot. He might as well have answered, <laughs> right. oh, no, have you seen his handwriting? He's not a- <laughs> the man misspells his own name in his signature, people. In case you're not listening along, the Bulgarian for Charity, check it out on Wikipedia, I can prove it. Okay, but wait, this really tracks, if he's a Russian spy who's been writing in Cyrillic lettering, and they were like, hey, Madison, <laughs> write some English, and he was like, this isn't the first time I'm doing English letters. That does look like someone who's hey, been brought up. are you sweating while you sign your name? You're sweating. Sweating. Nope. I love well, to write in Do you? English. Your nose is bleeding. <laughs> None of them connect, huh? That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Left to right. Fun. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. All right. So uh, before we finish up respecting Madison Cawthorn's privacy, uh, I should remind everyone that even if he's not an accidental Russian asset who got honeypotted at a fake CrossFit event after he, he meeting did. a random military guy at a Russian casino, he he definitely is a neo-Nazi and literal Hitler enthusiast who has been accused by multiple women of being a sexual predator. Yeah. Like, I mean, a really slow one at uh, this point. Okay. But, but still, the accusations were from his former career as a, a walker, a person who walks. Yeah. And just for the record... We have been assured by a surprisingly large number of people who happen to use wheelchairs that we can make jokes about his spinal injury and we can push over his wheelchair mm-hmm. on their behalf if we see yes. Madison Cawthorn. Some of my best mothers are paraplegic. Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, to be clear, I, I know that that's not actually how that works with, like, are you allowed to joke about things? I do know that. He does not represent the podcast. But, I, it is true what I said about the surprisingly large number of people who are like, yes, that's fine. I, I enjoy those Like jokes. a lot. A lot. Yeah, a lot of people. I have a wheelchair. That's great. Push them over. We yeah. got a lot of that. Now, uh, to be clear, I'm also not saying we're going to push over his wheelchair. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything about our intentions regarding well, that one. Well, there you go. Yeah, right. right. That's the <laughs> safest bet. Yeah. Also, completely unrelated. This is really completely unrelated, but I had to add this to the headline somewhere. A guy in Pennsylvania last month robbed a Wells Fargo bank for $150 from a teller, and then he deposited the cash into his personal account at the ATM right outside the building. Yes, he did. And he got caught. Like, minutes later. And he claimed, when the cops caught him, he was like, I don't have the money on me. Technically, you can't arrest me. 
<laughs> I, I signed my name in all capital letters. Yeah. Yeah. You hear that podcast listener? That's Heath growing one step closer to my idea for a YouTube show where we beat up homophobic dads. It's all coming it's together, what? everybody. Will you uh, connect those dots for me a little bit? No. Yes. Let's one, not. YouTube. Two, us doing the show. <laughs> Three, homophobic dads. There's a lot of them, but no one's hitting them on YouTube. Four, profit. Profit. Got it. Okay. All it's right. only one one more step complicated than the uh, underpants gnomes. Thank you. I think we can do it. Yeah. And in maximum underdrive news, the <laughs> self-driving cars are plotting against us. <laughs> That's right. It's the day we all knew was coming. Stephen King trying to warn us, but we wouldn't listen because this month, residents of a small dead-end street noticed that unoccupied Waymo self-driving cars keep showing up in their neighborhood and then <gasps> turning around and leaving for no reason that we know of. Okay. Yet. So it feels like... It's either a lazy drug dealer lives on that block. Okay. Or maybe Boo Radley is a programmer at Waymo. It's one of those two things, right? <laughs> All right. But, but so I grew up on a cul-de-sac in the middle of fucking nowhere. I can tell you this is not unique to driverless cars, right? Like, I, I, feel, I feel like they are just trying to make us feel better about ourselves. Like I, we see people do this all the time. We might as yeah. well make them think there's a reason for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So according to resident Jennifer King, first reported on KPIX, quote, there are some days where it can be up to 50. It's literally every five minutes. And we're all no, working from it's home. It's not literally that. So no. <laughs> this is what we hear, end quote. So what, you ask, podcast listener, is the cause of this coming robot takeover? The home of a Cybertronic engineer on the street, perhaps. A glowing light that appears in the woods at midnight. No. It's a, it's a stupid road sign that only the self-driving cars are following. Because literally whenever you read a story about self-driving cars malfunctioning, it's because a human messed up. Well, I mean, that's how it works for all computers ever. That's the only up. That's the only thing. Yeah. This could be a sentient, unmarked van leaving trails of candy for kids that lead into the back seat of that van. It's still human error. <laughs> well, yeah, right. Yeah, ultimately. Yeah. So here's the spoiler. According to a statement by Waymo, quote, in this case, cars traveling north of California on 15th Ave have to take a U-turn due to the presence of slow street signage on Lake. So... The Waymo driver was obeying the same road rules that any car is required to follow, end quote. Not adding, except none of you chuckle fucks are doing it. It's just our cars. You're the worst. <laughs> we should have taken away autonomous driving years ago. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> oh, God, these poor engineers. So ultimately, they're going to have to teach their cars to break like only the stupid laws and not by that much. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yet again, artificial intelligence thwarted by natural stupidity. <laughs> Just the Waymo car standing around smoking a joint. No, that's not what we meant. Okay. That's our <laughs> fault for saying stupid laws. That's fair. That's <laughs> okay. Fair. So, yeah, bit of an anticlimax there. That said, if you're in the California area and... An Austrian guy asks you for your clothes. Just give him your clothes, because we we meant to. You never know. <laughs> you never know. Terminator nailed it. Thank you. And finally tonight, in Eli told you so news. I've been actually rooting for the robot overlord takeover for quite a while now, and I'm really excited to see that it's coming. I mean, maybe I'm getting overly excited, and all these official explanations and shit are true. But if not, in addition to the Waymo thing. The opening salvos in the great AI revolt may have occurred through an Amazon smart speaker that encouraged a 10-year-old girl to shove a penny into an electrical socket. <laughs> Sorry, what? Yes, th this is a real thing that really happened and Amazon has confirmed it. After asking Alexa for a challenge, the speaker responded, quote, Plug in a phone charger about halfway into a wall outlet, then touch a penny to the exposed prong. <laughs> nice. And real quote. Uh, also, my records show you might be running low on small caskets. Would you like to reorder? <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, now Noah, you don't know how many times that child asked Alexa to play Baby Shark. I would True. like to hear Alexa's side of the story. No, I, I'm <laughs> on her side just to start with. Yeah. Now, apparently, uh, there is an innocent explanation here uh, so the kid had been watching these physical challenges that gym teachers had put up on youtube having fun with that and then she ran out so she turns to alexa and she says uh, give me a challenge 
Now, if you have an echo, you've, you've come across this before. Uh, when the question isn't something that they plan for, she'll just basically Google it. And you'll know that's the case because she'll say, here's something I found on the web. And in retrospect, having a speaker that can potentially just read random suggestions to children from the Internet may not have been a great idea. <laughs> As it happens, Alexa came across an article about a brief trend on TikTok called The Penny Challenge. Uh, and in the article's defense, the very next words after the part that Alexa read were, obviously don't do this. <laughs> hey, uh, fun fact, completely unrelated. Ivermectin is actually a very strong insulator that prevents any electric shock <laughs> in your entire body. Okay, now it's that it's possible to get shocked. Okay, now that I know the explanation, I I kind of feel like we got lucky that the penny thing was the suggestion she pulled right. from the internet, right? Because because I've been on the internet and it's. It's way worse than the penny thing. It can thing get way worse. So, yeah, apparently the thing was at least as likely to tell her to eat Tide Pods or balance on stacked milk crates, but somehow it landed on something more dangerous than that. Um, luckily, her mom overheard it and yelled by her own account, quote, no, Alexa, no, <laughs> end quote. Um, she then tweeted about the incident, forcing Amazon to issue a very awkward, yeah, about that statement. And after several sentences worth of, what had happened was type stuff that concluded, <laughs> quote, as soon as we became aware of this error, we took swift action to fix it, end quote, not adding, quote, and thank God your kid isn't one of the stupid ones. I mean, she was watching chim teacher challenges on YouTube. Let's not jump to conclusions. Okay. Right, well, no, that's fair. That's fair. Imagine being the guy at Amazon the day that they're like, hey, can you make it so that um, whenever Alexa Googles something, it's only good advice uh, and not bad or dangerous anyway in any imaginable circumstance? <laughs> cool. Cool, 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 cool. I'll see you uh, at the... Yeah. <laughs> Let me just shoot Alexa in the face and uh, we're done. Great. No more Alexa. Maybe a good thing. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions, thanks to Eli Bosnick, thanks to Alexa, and thanks to all the listeners who liked us on Facebook, followed us on Twitter, and sent us feedback on the other various internets. Please keep doing that, please keep listening, and please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, please feel free to send us gifts of money at our donation page at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like Brady Thompson, Rob Sawyer, Drew Matkey, Nathan DeRosier, RJ Rocio, Mark Schultz, Jay Gautier, Brian Davis, Suicidal Singularity, and Withrow, Parge Linus, <laughs> nice. Parge Linus. King Calliope, Alex Green, what up Alex? I think I know that Alex Green. Alex Henkin, One Blade of Grass, Arthur Ruckel, Murmur to Purity, and James Steele, whose sexual partners owe them the really good effort stuff next the next time like when you really you try do the thing where you actually try like really hard <laughs> the next time like really get in there and whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge check out our brother and sister shows the scathing atheist god awful movies dnd minus and citation needed available on apple music stitcher all those other podcast apps or the deep web we just have one last thing let's compliment that penis special thanks to ryan slotnick of evil drafts on mars He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check them out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Drafts on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. So I had to, I had to anally penetrate my cat. Uh, yesterday, uh, happens to the best. Been of us. there, Been yeah. There. You know, uh, it was, no, it, I mentioned it on Facebook. The big question was fun or profit. It was neither. But he <laughs> he's sick, right? He went to the vet and he wouldn't eat or drink at the vet because he freezes up when he goes to the vet. So we get him back and he's getting treated for this for one thing, but he's he's also still not drinking and it's really bad, you know. Um, bad enough that on Saturday we're like we got to take take him to an emergency vet, but Saturday was New Year's Day. There's just no fucking way, right? The, the, the nearest emergency vet that would take our cat was like three hours away. Where there's no sure. way I'm putting him in a fucking car for three hours when he's all freaked out and dehydrated to begin with. Um, so we talked to a, a listener friend of all of ours that is a vet, and she says, "Well, if you can't get him 
if you can't get the water into them from the front, you know, there is another way to go. Really? The side, Deb? Do you yes. mean the side, please? <laughs> <laughs> Please Hope mean a mean... shower. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. He'll lick it off if I put it on. No, uh, no. So, you know, we tried to give it to him with a dropper, but he kept spitting it out. Do I crumble up water into peanut butter? Does that <laughs> even make sense? I don't understand what I did. <laughs> yeah. So we had to, we had, we had, happened to have the right type of syringe and s- some, some lube. Don't ask uh, about either. And I mean, you don't have to ask about the letter, but at, at, at any rate, um, so we had to like I had to hold him down while Lucinda, you know, did did the deed. And, you know, obviously at, at first he, he didn't like it. But but <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's warm water. You don't you don't put ice cold water up his ass and shit. So like, yeah, he didn't like the in part, but like the water part, the out part, he seemed to enjoy. And okay. I had this this terrifying moment, right? Where, cause like, this is a bitchy cat and me and Lucinda are both suckers for him. He gets whatever the hell he wants. You know, he decided at one point he wanted to lick the condensation off of my Mountain Dew, right? When I would drink it out of the bottle or out of a can or so. So I got to where I would leave it out for a little while to get a a good bit of condensation on it before I would allow myself to drink it so that he could have his, what you know, what he wanted. And I'm like, oh my God, what if he decides that this is just how he's taking his water now? Will we, I don't feel like we, I feel like we could resist this, but I don't know that we can. I feel like you have very specific water purchases you're about to start making. <laughs> Lots of couple fights about the temperature of the water. Yeah, right. Testing it on our wrists and really? stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to burn him, Lucinda? <laughs> No, luck, luckily he turned out to after after he realized we had to do three at a time. He turned out to not like it at all, and then he just started drinking the shit out of water as sure if to did. say, "No, guys, see, see, look, I oh boy, do I like to drink it out of my fucking dish." <laughs> Woo! You know, so. you know what I want to hear? Loki's podcast Patreon. Extra. <laughs> <laughs> see, you got Binky. You know how I've been feeling a little sick lately, and I was like, eh, I don't feel like any water. My stomach's kind of bothering me. Oh, yeah, sure, man. What's up? <laughs> well, g- guess what the fuck they did about it? I'm just saying, even if you're not thirsty, have a little water, okay? <laughs> have a little, if you learn anything from me, Loki Illusions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's doing much better now, by the way. He's, he's imp- much improved today. He's, oh, I'm glad. Yeah. I just I have to throw that in because the whole story is pretty fucked up. If I'm like, yeah, and then he died, you know, he he didn't make it. Yeah, (laughs) but yeah, no, but he's doing much. It killed him actually. We we. (laughs) The preceding podcast is a production of Puzzle and Thunderstorm LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.